103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. About rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville. And we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call? and video show broadcasting from Knoxville and has been for over 10 years. Did you know that one, Ben? Yes, but I'm only interested in the halftime show and the commercials. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll try to make them interesting, uh, sure. entertaining. Yeah. If you like to entertain, I'm sorry, enter, he blew my mind. If you like to interact <laughs> <laughs> with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Wombat, what do you have for us today, topic wise? Hey, so welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I wanted to talk about vaccines and why they're important, but really the myths that are against them. Vaccine want- myths? Yeah, vaccination myths because they've been they've been kind of rampant so far, and and surprisingly, even in like my workspace, they are, have some hold. And you know, it only takes a couple of questions for you to crack into like the whole. Oh my gosh, people don't think like me. That's that's really bizarre. But like, why don't they think like me? Why? Why? What's going on here? And so um, I wanted to I want to dive into that. We have uh, a really really great group of people here already. And before we do that. Like do a quick, super, super fast, super, 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 super fast, super quick assessment on everyone's life story over the last week. Boudreau, how you been? How you been? How you been last week? I've been good. I've been good. Um, uh, the weirdest thing happened this morning, if I can share shortly. I have sure. this cup here and yeah. I, 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 I poured ice in it and then some water and okay. it started bubbling. It was like bubbling like profusely. And I looked at my wife. I was like, what, what is that? It's fine. Just air in the it's pockets, air pockets in the ice. It's fine. Right. Okay. I was drinking on it. No problem. No problem. And then set it down. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, it's like, you know, I drink my water all day. I like to, uh, and I took a sip and it was super bitter. And I was like, Oh my God, what, what is it? Something's going on. This is wrong. And I was, I'm spitting in the sink. And, uh, I, I poured it out and I look in the bottom and there's a little tiny, like stain at the bottom. It looked like, dude, and what's I, going on? Uh, with I was freaking out. I was like, I have uh, no idea what's going on. I think yeah. I would too. And then I'll, I think you, he science, took another sip after kid. this. That's the weird uh, part. That's oh, yeah, weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I handed it to my kid. Here, try this. Um, <laughs> then, then, I, then it dawned on me, and I realized uh, I take a Meprazole for heartburn uh, uh-huh. occasionally, and I, I put the pill right here on the top and set it down to, oh. to, you know, to go get something, and then I was going to take the pill and, and then drink and it slipped down into the little, there's a little hole there. Ah. And it dissolved. Ah, oh, so really good. Good. I'm not well, at least it was something you were supposed to have anyway. Exactly. All right. So, and, and listen, first of all, ice cubes aren't supposed to bubble. Like, that yeah. should be I your know. first yeah. indication. I know. I know you love your wife, but like, as soon as she said that, you're just like, I, I know. And you're just like, you're so right. And you pour it down the sink as she says, and you keep nodding your head. That's right. how you score husband points. Oh. And you get some new ice and a new cup if necessary. And you continue on with your life. Yeah. Yeah. Good theory, but you can't really prove it wasn't a ghost. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Scott, speaking of ghosts, so we should believe been? it in the meantime, right? Yeah. Really right. can't until it's proven wrong. Absolutely, right. that's how you. That's how science works. Everybody right. knows that. Mm-hmm. Scott, how you been since last week? Have you seen any oh, ghosts? Man, great, as again. Ooh, oh, it lights up. This is a new one. Flash, yeah, cool. more stuff, more so stuff. You have, so you have two keyboards now. If oh, that's I've got right. all kinds of stuff now. I've got like so for people who are just listening five. to audio, uh, Scott has been collecting more gadgetry for making music. He is a uh, well-known, well-versed, yeah. well-accomplished, very talented music wow. producer under the name Dub Shine on SoundCloud. I'll put a link in the description for you. Thank you, and man. And what he just showed us right now is this glittering soundboard <laughs> other panel of glittering buttons and lights yeah. synth engines so what is just, what does that thing do mind so give us the generates water. um uh what they call fm synthesis which is just um synthesis it's a synthesizer engine so you're able to it's frequently frequency modulation so you're able to change the sounds up and create stuff it just gives you a lot of um uh opportunities and ways to you know, create your own unique 
um, synthesizers, sounds, and stuff like that, which is really important for the kind of music that I like to, sure. to mess around with, you know. So, yeah, it's more than just the. It gives you more than just the 60 notes that come with like a keyboard. Now you can like construct your own sounds for your own sounds. Sound out of it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It gets out of the presets. Yeah. yeah. I had to, Eric, you might appreciate this too. We're like, we're all musicians here, but uh, I have been experimenting with different ways of playing my, my electric guitar to make new kinds of sounds as like atmospheric backgrounds for the stuff that I'm making. So it's not like, like I get, I found a way to play it where it makes it sound like a flute. I found a way to reverse the reverb. So it makes it sound like it's the whole songs in like a dark tunnel, but it like has like this really nice low end. It doesn't interfere with the music, but it like builds on the body of it. There's cool things that you can do. It makes me listen to music very differently. That's Cause cool. bef before I used to be like, man, I love this song. And now I'm like, Shh. I love mm -hmm. this song. It's pretty good. This is the best song ever. Like I got to <laughs> hear it though. I got to hear it. I'm listening for things. Larry, how you been since last week, my friend? I'm doing fine. Just staying in, staying safe. I'm 70, so I don't get out a lot anyway. Um, but, yeah, just playing computer games and working on Facebook. Uh, yeah. And post, post for atheism and all that. I heard you've been mowing down terrorists on islands. Uh, <laughs> well, just accurate? virtually. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> in computer games. I've gotten into uh, Far Cry 5. Nice. And the... Uh, game editor so i've created a few levels there that wow. i've posted uh i guess i'm pretty good at it i haven't gotten less than a four-star rating on it and out of a five-star series uh, level yeah. so uh, i'm enjoying doing it almost as much as playing or maybe even more so listen who's, larry if you need uh, a copy of horizon zero dawn i will send it to you because that game will blow your mind you think you're having fun with far cry he he larry fancies himself a gamer but he doesn't know he's talking to an 80s kid <laughs> lived and and de we're the developers now you're playing yep. the games that people yep. in my generation are making right now and yeah. there's levels man and i'm telling uh, you horizon zero okay. dawn is probably my game of the year from last year only because it was and you're gonna send me a copy okay. i'll send you a copy if you need a copy <laughs> i will send you a copy if you need a copy but imagine doing everything you're doing with robot dinosaurs at the same time too it makes no sense it's super fun yeah it's super okay. super fun oh, sounds good all right, I'm okay. up for it. So, hey guys, uh, speaking of robot dinosaurs, Eric, you got vaccinated, isn't that right? You got your yeah. second vaccination done? How'd yep. that go? Uh, uh, well, for the first 14 hours, it was great, no problem. Um, but it hit me pretty hard. Um, but I, I always try to preface that statement with, but that's okay. You know, <laughs> it is okay. I, I mean, I literally got to plan on it. You know, I knew there was a chance it was going to going to hit me a little hard. And really it was only about 24 hours of kind of fever body aches, but um, I could plan on it. I knew it was going to potentially happen. So I cleared my schedule. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Uh, I think I took three warm baths in that 24 hour period and it's, but it's my body doing its job. Right. So walk me through it. Cause you're, you don't look like you're over 75. Like how yeah. are you, yeah. how dare you have these? <laughs> right, magical... I mine yet. Yeah, I know. Like so, what's going on? What's why are you special? Turns out when you fill out the form, if you're an atheist, you're allowed to lie because oh. there's no there's no God watching you. He's yes. not he's not being serious. No, right. no, I, I my wife and I both kind of got in. We we think the only way we can explain because we know several people all in the same boat. Some younger than me that got it that first batch, and it was it was UK trying to kind of test the system. They didn't have time to prioritize. They they did immediately the next week. The next week it went to K through 12 teachers and, and people over 70. But I think they had a, a, they had doses they had to use. They had to figure out how to do the system. I was already in the UK's HMO. So they had all my info. Mm -hmm. So I, I you think were it a guinea was, pig. I, I think so. Uh, and, and I, mm, at least yeah. logistically for the system. I think, yeah. yeah. Yes. For the system, at least for that the yes. mm -hmm. dispersion yeah. distribution, not for the vaccine, but right. yeah, for the, yeah. So, uh, I mean, absolutely lucky uh blessed i suppose <laughs> <laughs> hashtag blessed yeah uh so my situation is i'm also vaccinated at least the first half i got my second dose coming up in march what yeah my situation is that a friend of mine had a she was a home health care worker she went to go get a vaccine in a very small county in tennessee 
And there were so few people attending, despite the fact that they signed up for it, that they not only vaccinated her, the person she was caring for, but her as well in the car. No paperwork, no nothing. They just said, hey, we have them. If they're thawed, I mean, if we already, you know, thawed them, right. we can't they put them back into the- a certain time limit on them. Exactly. It's not like yeah. it's guacamole. You can't put it back in the fridge and just use right. it <laughs> the next day, right? So she's like, they have vaccines here. Um, they want people to use them. They said, tell your friends and family, because we're not getting enough people coming at the rate that they need to come for us to use all these up. And so she emailed that out to myself and like my boss. And the first thing I did was get in my car <laughs> and drive down to that small county. It was only about a half hour away. And so I go there and there is literally one car in line compared to the town I'm in now, where it's like, you know, 25 cars, they're turning away people. This town, this county, one car in line. I go up there and I'm like, hey, do you guys have extra vaccines? I'll, I mean, I was like, yes. I had four ladies waving me down saying, yes, please, please come in. Uh, we got the Moderna uh, vaccine, the shot on my arm. Uh, they said, here's the card, come back next month, tell your friends and family, we need people to come in. Like we need um, people to put these up. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, fantastic. Told um, all my coworkers, four of my coworkers got them the next day, uh, more going in next week. But I think what's good is the sentiment of someone who might sign up for a vaccine and, and turn it down, or someone who might be aware that there's vaccines available and not use them at all. The anti-vaxxing mindset, the just the, ah, it's raining. I don't need to get vaccinated today. Yeah. <laughs> mindset. Do tomorrow. Manana. That, that waste is a very precious commodity. Maybe not or the even guilt. a commodity. Or the guilt of, of like someone like us, young, like, no, I'm not going to go. I don't want to take it from someone else. Yeah. And it's like, it's going to get thrown away. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I might sound like I'm justifying it to myself. Maybe I am a little bit, but no, I think it's absolutely valid. I think it's, it's a thing of, Hey, if you don't use this, this goes in the trash. And Mm -hmm. that is not only bad for the, the allotment of vaccines, but it makes one additional person who could have gotten vaccinated, not vaccinated, which increases the number of vectors and hurts everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a situation, so here's my tip, here's my initial tip. And Scott, let me know about the morality of this because I'm going to go to you with this next. Uh But if you are in a situation where it's like, hey, I'm in a really big city, I'd like to get vaccinated, but there's, they have, you know, strict protocols, there's no rules in place, or there's rules in place and I can't get them. Meanwhile, super, super small county is trying to do statistics, but everyone's wearing, you know, the red MAGA hats. (laughs) And they'd rather just drink bleach. And you're like, they have vaccines, there's no one using them. And when I, and I'm hearing that they, the nurses there want people to go there and get them. I'm going to make a half hour trip. I'm going to make an extended lunch break, go and pick one up, see if they have it, see if they have it. And if they say no, that's cool. What do you think about that as far as uh, a moral choice or at least an effective choice towards reducing the number of available vectors for the the virus? Yeah, I I think that um, I don't, I don't, I don't really see anything wrong with it because um, as long as you're not forcing your will on somebody else, Mm. you know, that's really, for me, that that's that's one of the main criteria for for um, morality. For me, is like if you force your will on somebody else, if you mm. know without their consent, then that's immoral. But I don't see how that situation fits that criteria. Right, especially if you're doing it just on the chance that they may have extra ones and they can't use them at the time, right? And and are willing to be turned away if that's the case. Yeah, you know, if you're just making yourself available, I don't say anything immoral about that. That's exactly what happened to my coworker. He went there, asked them if they had extra. They said, well, it's still early today. If you don't mind parking out here, uh, and, and there was a group of other people parked, we'll, we'll wave you in when we're getting towards the end. By the time they got to him and his wife, they only had one left, and he asked them to vaccinate his wife. Good husband points. Good husband points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they said, not only that, but it's like, come back tomorrow because it'll be the same thing. So come back tomorrow, and uh, we'll most likely have one for you. It'll be the same situation. Just show up like the last half hour and a half. So that way we have a good idea of the rate. And then, well, yeah, we'll sure. get you vaccinated too. And I'm like, that uses up the supply. That's yeah. good. And that's that's what we want. We want people to be vaccinated here. So overall, good thing. Here's the thing, though. I talked with one of my coworkers, uh, the only two on our team left who haven't been vaccinated. And um, I don't, like Scott said, I didn't want to pressure anyone to do it if they don't want to. But I did ask why they didn't want to. And this person told me that they thought it was unsafe because once upon a time they had a flu shot 
and they got the flu or at least had the symptoms of the flu and they didn't like it. And so I'm like, Ooh, so many things I want to say. Have you heard about that? Boudreaux? Have you ever heard that before? I mean, uh, you know, I got a COVID vaccine and I got symptoms like it, but man, so much less severe and, you know, I didn't have the yeah. coughing fits and the respiratory. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe at this time we should talk about how vaccines work. Hmm. Larry, why don't you lead us on that? Okay. Well, the problem with the vaccine, with the virus is that uh, your body is not set up to handle them until they're exposed to it. You have no antibodies in your, bo in your body to handle the virus that comes in. Right. Of course, antibodies are the body's response to uh, an invasion of a bacteria or a virus uh, to be able to handle it and, and, and get rid of it. Basically. Kind of like little signs that say, hey, this is a bad thing. Like little post-it right. notes for the white blood cells. Right. Like, hey, so when, you when, you get a, when you get a virus like COVID, it hits your body cold. You don't, mm. you don't have any antibodies. So it works real hard, you know, as quickly as it can to build up the antibodies that it needs to fight off the virus. However, sometimes it's not enough. It's not quick enough, and mm. the virus overwhelms your body, and you die. Yep. What what uh, vaccines do is they take a, a snippet of the DNA of the virus, just a small portion of it that doesn't that won't do the harm that the full virus does, and it and they inject you with it, and your your body recognizes that as a foreign body, starts building antibodies, and before long you have all these antibodies built up in your body that would recognize that piece of DNA were to uh, be exposed if you were to be exposed to it in the future, like come in contact with the actual virus. At that point, when you when you're exposed to the actual virus, you have the antibodies and they jump right on the the job, as it were. And, <laughs> okay. And uh, they fight really off the cool. virus, uh, hopefully before you even show symptoms. Can I just just some from clarification? <laughs> sure. Uh, you you're use... you're. Uh, you're you don't have any expertise in this area, do you? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You did a you did a fantastic job, Larry. I'm just going to say, instead of DNA, they use something called messenger RNA, which is mm -hmm. uh, uh, a genetic information that's used to make proteins, and it's typically mm -hmm. that protein shell of the virus, or what it looks like ah, on the okay, outside. Okay, cool, good to know. And so, and aren't the two newer vaccines not mRNA? I, I thought I heard that. So the one Moderna I got shot with Pfizer. was mRNA. That's Moderna. Right. I don't know what Pfizer they, uses. Pfizer was mRNA too. But oh, okay. Two, the two new ones, Johnson and Johnson, and then one other. I didn't. I thought maybe they both of them weren't mRNA. Maybe but, not. I think yeah. they're also one shot only or something like that. At least one of them is a one shot. Yeah. So let's do a quick history on vaccines as well. They used to just straight up. Oh. Actually, Boudreaux, you know about the first vaccines that they ever used. Why don't you no. roll the back on that? <laughs> remember? Who was the yeah, no, who's remember. the guy who invented that? Yeah, why don't yeah. you walk us through no, that? No, no. Remember, my, my uh, <laughs> the, the, the guy who, who understood how vaccines worked uh -huh. was Louis Pasteur. Uh -huh. he yes. Was, yeah. And yes. He, because the he first was, guy was just like, oh, what's going on with this? Could, didn't, didn't know why it was working. But I'm taking this pus and I'm putting it in the cats and the cats are dying. What's going on right. here? That's kind of weird. Right. Oh. <laughs> okay, so well, do you know the name of that guy, the 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 original dude to do it, but not understand really what he was doing? I don't remember who was the guy that. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I, I feel like we're disregarding an entire branch of uh, yeah. science, but there was a guy who was essentially understanding that people cough up these weird things, and when you put those weird things in healthy people, they get sick too. But if you do it enough times, <laughs> they don't get as sick anymore. And he's like, this is a cool little weird thing. I wonder if this might be useful in the future for something. Science used to be super baller oh. back in the days, guys. It was just mad and crazy. And then they had laws they had to put in. But the, the mad scientist, studies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mad scientist was. Yeah, let's not forget that the, the Nazis during World War II were, did an awful lot of science work. Okay. Oh, let, they, I feel like. When you pull out the Nazi card, I feel I have to make some justifications here. But yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. it was pretty nice. They experimented on my father. I'm sure they had him in a Nazi prisoner war camp for nine months, and he had Nazi. to operate him on like nine times when he was in there. Though I would so. say the guy who who was doing the vaccine stuff was not a Nazi. Was not some evil dude. He was just right. like cows get sick. Let me try to do this this puzzle and put in healthy the best cows. science. Best science at the time, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was useful. And then Louis Pasteur was like, oh, dude, what are you doing? Like, come on. Yeah. I, 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 this is good data that you got, but clearly yeah. what's going on is you're building up an immunity to this. Yep. Maybe we can try 
cooking the pus and kill what's ever inside of it because they didn't really understand germ theory back then. So like maybe right. if we heat it up and then put it in a person and they don't get as sick, they'll, they'll be more immune to it later on in the future. And maybe we can have a better way of everybody being healthy. By the way, you guys are eating raw food. Don't do that. <laughs> By the way, here's a great way to like make milk yeah. last for a really long time. Hey, I got a lot of ideas. I'm going to lose pasture, baby. I'm, I'm doing all sorts of cool things. It's like, calm down, guy, calm down. It's like, you're only going to be known for one thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not back then, man. Right, right, right. You only get one. You only get one, Louis. It's like, fine, 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 fine. Yeah, maybe we but, should mention Jonas Salk at the same time while we're sure. talking about all this. Who's that? Go ahead. Who, well, he was the guy that? who developed the uh, vaccine against polio. Mm. Uh, people my age will have a little uh, mark on their arm where they had to not only just give you a shot, but uh, the way I remember it was that they put it on your skin and then used a, a pin or a needle to make multiple puncture rooms. Mm. And uh, that would get into the wound uh, and it would it would make you immune to polio. Wow. Matter of fact, they pretty much eradicated polio uh, from the 50s on. I mean, I was born in 1950 and people were dying and being paralyzed by polio wow. uh, during that time. Uh, but now, of course, uh, <clears throat> polio is still making a comeback in third world uh, countries. But uh, if we can get the vaccine to them, that won't yeah. take care of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it's, it's important and to stay vaccinated, it's, even uh -huh. if the disease is in your country, which is one of the myths that I wanted to address today. Like, just because the disease is in your country doesn't mean you shouldn't get vaccinated because we live in a world culture where everyone affects everybody. But uh, I want one last thing. So it used to be take a disease, put it in a person, and that's how you built the community. Then it was destroy the disease or like uh, destroy any kind of viruses and just send that stuff in. Now we know we don't have to send the whole virus. We can literally just send the chain that gives instructions on how to build the outside of the virus, put that into person and such that when they react to it, they're not even reacting to a real virus. It's just a piece of it that they, the immune system can recognize so much more quickly. So you will still have what is called an immuno response. You'll still get sick. Maybe you might have a fever for a bit. You might feel really lethargic for a bit. You might have to take a nap. <laughs> you may have a sore arm. Yeah. But those and are all good signs. Yeah. Those are signs and that for your body's like. listening and maybe new listeners, uh, sure. uh, Wombat is Dr. Wells. He's yeah, a, yeah. A, a PhD microbiologist. Biochemist. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell you this, Larry. We've been, this for, we've been doing this for so many years. I don't know how many times <laughs> I okay. told you about the TV show. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming back at me. Okay. 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 But anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, it's just a really cool thing because the chances of you getting the virus from a piece of a virus is, is so small. In fact, it's literally not. I hate being absolute. I hate being absolute. You guys know that about me, but it's not feasible okay you would have to have been coughed on by somebody as you walked out of the building for that to happen so the immune responses are good things and um i'll throw this out to scott because i'd love to get your feedback on it have you ever met someone who may not have wanted to get vaccinated and like what kind of encouraging things would you tell them knowing that you don't want to impose your will on them but you yeah. want to definitely make sure they're informed right so there's a couple people, there's, there, there's a couple set of excuses that people give you for not getting vaccinated. Um, the latest one um, I got from a friend was saying that he didn't want to get vaccinated. He's an African-American and he doesn't trust. Oh, is he Charlize Theron, his brother yeah, like, or yeah, something? Like, <laughs> no, 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 this is a personal person. Is, person. is he a black guy or is he from, is he from Africa? Uh, black, yeah, I'm black American. I'm just playing with you. All right. Yeah, cool, yeah, cool, yeah. Cool. He, he <laughs> his, his thing was this Tuskegee experiment. T Tuskegee. Tuskegee? Yeah. yeah. The simplest so, study. No, it's just, true. There's that mistrust there with, um, you know, thinking that it's just a way to guinea pig, you know, black folks or whatever. Absolutely. Um, then, there, then there was another one where someone told me that it's because the um, – you know, they rushed it to, to get out. It was so fast, you know, like yeah. uh, vaccines not safe because it was rapidly developed and tested. So what I told him is, you know, many pharmaceutical companies invested a lot of resources into quickly developing a vaccine for COVID-19 because the worldwide impact on the pandemic. So the emergency situation kind of warranted 
an emergency response. Hmm. And that doesn't mean that the companies bypassed safety protocols or didn't perform adequate testing, you know. Oh, and, they, they started, they, they made, the, made the vaccines just in case. But like while they were testing, they went ahead and, and, and produ produced them. So just in case, and some, some lost the bet and had to throw them away. But right. well, yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a good counter argument to that point is that, hey, they went ahead and just started making it. So right. that if it if it passed the trials, oop, we already got it made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And you know and that's why only the biggest companies have one right now because they could afford to take that loss. Yes. Yep. And in all these cases, it, it sounds like the whole thing is about trust. Mm. People don't trust what they hear. They don't trust science. They don't trust the media. There's a lot mm -hmm. of distrust going on. Unlike it was, say, um, back when the polio vaccine was introduced. I don't think I remember reading about that this big anti-vax movement back then not at least my dad didn't tell me that and we talked about that not long ago but yeah, uh, no i think the science was held in a generally higher regard at that time mm, than it right. is now there's so much misinformation and the uh, conspiracy or series uh, out there that uh, it, it's taken yeah, quite a bit exactly and some folks also think that um these vaccines are going to alter your dna mm -hmm. Hmm. I got things to say, but Scott, <laughs> you made an interesting point. Um, we've had had an administration where the last four years had fostered an anti-intellectualism wave in America. And we also, as Americans, have very recent history where we would take people of, you know, who are minorities and experiment on them in documented black and white, you know, or absolutely white. egregious form yeah red or white and it was really unfortunate and not only unfortunate but like it's just such a thing where it's like i can't believe a, a sitting government would allow this to happen and you expect me to believe you the next time there, there's an emergency no like that kind of mindset's fostered through generations just as much as hate or love can be like distrust is a thing that could be passed on generationally and so here we are in a situation where there is an actual threat, like someone is crying wolf, and you have the people who are spurned by the scientists because they weren't taught it very well, or their leaders don't show a sign of respect for it, or that they do have a, a love of science, but know for a fact that the government has completely held them at such a low regard that they would use them as guinea pigs. Mm. How could you ever come to trust someone where it's like, Nick, get in line. You got to get this vaccine. And I was like, hold, 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 hold on. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can't, like I said, I wouldn't face, force my will on someone. The best thing I can do is ask, in a sense, what is your motivation? What are you trying to go to? What's your goal? And like, what's the best way to achieve that goal? Like, what's the epistemology of your thought process? What's the methodology that you're using to, to try to maintain the best welfare possible? And what options are there that will allow you to do that? Is it trusting the conspiracy theorists? Is it just having a distrust in science in, in general? Like, will that help you have a better welfare? Or is there a possibility that maybe you don't have to be first in line? I doubt you'd be first in line. Everyone kept saying that. My mom was like, I don't want to be first in line. There's no way you're first in line. They did so many trials and tests. <laughs> you're never going to be first, mom. <laughs> yeah, but, but after a point, could you look at the data and look at the people who are coming about? Is there, is there a path for information that you can accept? that will make you feel at least more uh, accepting of the fact that this could actually be a helpful thing for you if your goal is to be helped. And I think we have that information now. I was never skeptical of vaccines, but I was skeptical if they had come out a month later. Like if someone said COVID was happening and they were, got, they were out the next month, I'd be like, who's the president? No, I'm not taking that vaccine. <laughs> You're not going to put that in my body. I'm waiting until a Biden administration <laughs> comes in. Or anybody else. Right, right. But it took well, a year. Oh, go for it. Go for I was going to say, well, what, what would you say if uh, you came up in line and and uh, the the person giving the vaccine went to a different drawer to grab. The oh from man, the white guy I drive, I drive, dude. I'm serious. I'm serious. It's just like no, 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 no. You're oh wait, we got yours right over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like in a bucket. And you're like no. It's like that's Gatorade. Come on, man. All right. So hey, we're at the bottom of the half hour. How about we uh, take back and we'll go into more vaccine myths when we come back to the the main show. Hey, this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Behind 
finger held back the tears. It was me against the world. I'm sure that I'd win. The world fought back, punished me for my sins. I felt so alone, so insecure. I blamed you instead, made sure I was hurt. They tried to warn me, my evil ways, but I couldn't. WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. With us on the show today, we have uh, Wombat, Boudreaux, Doubtfire. Welcome all. Uh, Today is Sunday, February 7th, uh, 2021. Uh, Let's talk about the atheists and free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 18th, going on 19th year now. ASK has over 1,000 members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID and personal meetings uh, in a bar or restaurant. Uh, After we all get vaccinated, nice. you will find us online at Facebook or go to knoxvilleatheist.org for our website, or go to Meetup or Google Knoxville Atheist, and you can find us. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. 
Sun. That's yeah. right. Made it just Early, in time. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Atheist video show uh, broadcasting here from Knoxville. Well, it's called Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And look for it on YouTube. That name's way too long. Ask yeah. <laughs> Atheist Society of Knoxville. You guys it's got like it right should the first create a, an, 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 What do you call it? Uh, initial sport yeah. acronym <laughs> get its own country yeah uh, also we did we did that for 10 years on a local tv station a local access tv station called free thought forum knoxville and you can find the archives for that on youtube as well uh where do we want to pick up today uh, we were talking about the best ways to keep vaccines cool when they get thawed so that people can use them and they started using fans guys what a fan what a fan <laughs> what a mighty good fan what, what a, a mighty, mighty, mighty good, good fan. fan. <laughs> <laughs> We're so horrible. <laughs> All right. So uh, quick, quick, quick. We're, we were uh, talking about a really interesting subject last week, which was quit hijacking my culture, dude. Well, we talked about how people gave up stuff that was native to their culture, lost in memory, lost in time, because maybe a group of Catholic priests came and showed up at their shore one day and wiped that whole stuff out and or evangelicals no yeah, or evangelicals or just culture in general like it happens all the time culture evolves culture changes but we can or sometimes lose we can lose it and get hijacked and so uh we got some really really funny comments uh today and one of them's from Dada's trading room who want to correct me on my pronunciation of ventilator <laughs> which I threw out to Buffalo. He says, I pronounced it as if I was Polish. Like, uh, I gave it the wrong uh, starting and sentence. Is, well, yeah, because V sounds like W in, 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 in Polish, at least. So it's like, ventilator is how I should have pronounced it. Well, and I asked him, okay, cool. Well, how do you say fan? Like, if, if Buffalo comes back, what's a good way to say fan in Polish? He's like, you just say fan. Like, it's already colloquialized. The word for fan got hijacked in Poland. <laughs> it just means you just say fan and they'll understand it but you'll probably say it with more of a polish accent uh we got some other channel comments too in general this is on some older stuff eric you'd been asked about free will Note, we only have about a half hour left in the show. <laughs> All right. So the 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 question was, Timer. it sounded, the, I can give you the impression of the question because it's actually kind of long, but it was like, it sounded as if you were choosing that free will does not exist because you knew that there were two options, whether it could or could not, but you have chosen to believe that there's no free will. Gotcha. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> check, checkmate, dude, you, you win. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what to say other than like, you, you don't, you don't choose to believe in God or not. Like, you, like you that's the what whole, you're convinced of. Right. Right. And, and, and that's the whole, like, um, Pascal's wager, you know, debunked because like, I'm not going to choose to believe in a God just in case like that's, I mean, he'd see right through that. Wouldn't he? If he's a, you know, worth, worth his salt. So yeah, I, I don't choose to not believe in free will. I just, here's the evidence and uh, I'm not convinced that we have free will. So is that so you're determined by the evidence. I would say yeah. generally, like belief is not a choice. I can't believe that I'm wearing a red shirt. Like I'm based. Yeah. I'm my belief is a function of what I'm convinced is true, right? Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, the low determinology there is there. So yeah, you. It's not as much of a checkmate, though. It does sound nifty. Like that is enough to get yeah. enough you know, middle Tennesseans to vote for you. <laughs> That's the kind of logic that gets you in a political office, but not hey. necessarily uh, a degree. <laughs> I'm being nice here. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. Hey, Scott, uh, we got a question from uh, our last week's video when we were talking to a Christian uh, who was um, momentarily undetermined whether or not slavery was a bad thing and had to refer to his book to, to verify that. Uh, K real vivo says, why can't Christians admit that God ex only exists inside their heads, which is probably, you know, a straightforward question, a rude, but we are an atheist radio TV show. Scott, why can't Christians admit that God only exists inside their heads? For some reason, they, you know, there, there's basically two, uh, categories here, imaginary things and concrete things. And they want to, they want to smuggle their imaginary gods into the concrete category mm -hmm. because and they feel like it has more 
um, legitimacy. It has more bite. It has more objective. You can ground something objectively in a God that's a concrete God. But the problem is, as um, kind of implied in the question, they won't admit that because it's not true. They, they know that God is a, is a concept and it's subjective because we have many, many, many gods over long periods of time and different yep. cultures. And if there was an objective God we could all look at, then we'd all say, Hey guys, this is God. Just like we say, this is the Pacific ocean, you know? Uh, but you don't do that with God for some weird reason. Larry, I'll throw the same question out at you. Why do you think that Christians cannot admit that God only exists inside their heads? Well, because it may, it's a major part of their worldview. I mean, that's that's how they interpret the world around them. Um, I mean, they don't understand, apparently they don't understand science, or many of them don't. Uh, like, you know, um, I don't, I can't think of a good example. Like, where did we come from? Hmm. Uh, that would be a constant uh, question for them, you know, but if they believe in a God and they were raised to believe in a God and they... Are you okay? Get that microwave. <laughs> yeah, there's truck backing up over here. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's just a way for them to interpret the world and a big part of that interpretation is God. So... You know, they, throw, they have to, they would have to have it and it have to be real. I'll throw my hat into the ring and Boudreaux, I'd love for you to follow up on it. But um, I'm considering that when you are part of a religious outlook or religious doctrine, you're never given the, the appeal of a religion is that you don't have to deal with the concept of death because as Larry would say, it's more of a change of address rather than the, the punctuation mark of your lifetime. Right. And so if you are raised never having to deal with the, the reality of death or coming to terms with the fact that your life will end. It is a much, much harder thing to deal with when you're already in your adulthood or you know past teenage years and you're just like, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> I have no wherewithal to deal with all these emotions of finality and mortality. I'd rather just continue to believe in this God, God question because maybe there's a chance it is true and I will take whatever chance necessary to believe in this reality that I've constructed for myself or that other people are willing to engage me with at, then what could be objectively true in the sense of there's no good reason to believe in this God. And that in fact, I will die one day. Death is scary. And that's why I think is the major motivation to keep people in the church pews. Boudreaux, what do you think? Yeah, I, I was thinking exactly the same thing. And I'll, I'll add to it that uh, I think it's about seeing your loved ones too. You know, you, mm. you, you, you throw in the, the fact that, you know, and that's why I think too, religions off, often a, an accident of birth. Uh, you don't want to, uh, uh, Larry, is a comment or am I? Oh, go ahead. I was just oh. going to throw something in yeah. later. Yeah. But, but having all of your relatives believe in the same God or gods, <clears throat> uh, kind of, kind of puts you all in the same basket to where, you get to see each other all together. Uh, you know, I think otherwise you'd have people believing in different gods from their parents and their cousins and, you know, but, but if they're all going to different heavens then that, that, that doesn't, doesn't work. So, so yeah, the, the fear of death, but also the wanting to, to see your loved ones again. Um, and I get it. Uh, makes sense. Certainly if you tell it to a child. Sure. Larry. Um, I don't, I don't really think that it's death per se that keeps people in the pews or even the fact that we live forever. It keeps people in the pews. It's a fear of hell because if we just all lived forever and all believe that we would live forever, whenever we die, we just go to the next plane of existence. There's no reason to go to a church and, and re, re, uh, I don't know, reinitialize our goodness so that we will go to the correct place because we want to avoid the bad place. Scott, what do you got? Well, because I was a witness for so many years, I know that some people will join the most fundamental religions, not because of fear of hell, <laughs> because Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in hell. They believe when you die, that's it. So it's not necessarily the case, but I would agree that many, many, many people argue that, hey, if you, you know, Pascal's wager, I'd rather believe in this stuff than risk going to hell and being tortured. But we know that many religions don't teach 
hell or even afterlife. Some religions yeah. don't even teach an afterlife at all. Hmm. Maybe you could help me with the, my understanding of Jehovah's Witnesses. You say that Jehovah's Witnesses think that death is the end? Yep. They, um, people that, um, that are, the, the that are, vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses will not see a, a oh, the vast majority, but the, the chosen few will see the, the heaven. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. 144,000 yeah. will see heaven as of revelations, as out of, of revelations, yeah, out of yeah. revelations. Yeah. So, so chances are, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, don't bank on afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, re- they, you're not they, ending with that lottery they, ticket. So revelations yeah. also said it's just going to be virgin Jewish men too, but yeah. do they take that in consideration? Oh, geez. Yeah. So spiritual Jews. So people that were grafted into the, uh, to the, um, new covenant, which means that there's a, there, there's two different classes. There's the great crowd class, which are the, the majority of, um, Jehovah witnesses that will live forever on earth in a paradise on earth. Hmm. Um, if they, you know, like Moses, Abraham, you know, people like that, Noah, people that didn't that live before Jesus, that didn't get the chance to get saved by Jesus for their sins. They'll be resurrected on a paradise on earth to be judged for a thousand years. But and Scott, that, I think I got your main point. The main yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I don't want to keep going. Everyone's not fueled by hell as a motivator towards yeah, staying. Yeah. You know, I have to do some, more research into that. I didn't know yeah. that. So I'll check yeah, it out. There's a lot to it. Yeah. yeah. Same with Jews. Like they don't have a, the yeah, they don't have a hell. hell or heaven. Yeah. Except um, for like the Orthodox. Thing. Or or the never ending bar mitzvah. Yeah, there's always a splintered group that believes different things. Several yeah. splintered groups. But yeah, even when I was a Christian, I found the concept of nothingness more fear more fearful than hell. Because at least in hell, I'm being punished for being me. I exist in some capacity, and even if it's like a a thing whipping me, I'd be like, yeah, but I'm still me, and I can still like mm-hmm. Smash Mouth. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but at least the people I'm hanging out with aren't grammar Nazis. And like, mm. I might f- meet some really cool people down here. Yeah. Like there was that silver lining to it. And like, even the devil in the Bible goes up to heaven to hang out with God and make bets on humans. So like, it was like, could hell really be that bad? Like when yeah. you think about it, yeah. if, if the I, leader I mean, of hell is up there, like, Hey, you should, you should mm-hmm. strike some lightning on this guy. And God's like, Oh, I could totally do that. I'll do 20 bowls. It's like yeah, this dumb story ever. According to me, I, I don't want to be rude. There are, we have Christians on the show who are very, very enthusiastic about that story. And that's its own video. Anyway, vaccination, guys. I want to go over some quick myths. Uh, Eric, I am noticing a distinct lack of um, uh, uh, infected autism in your body. What's going on with that? Because you just well, had two vaccines and you don't, you don't look any way... Um, I, I don't show it. You know, the <laughs> autism, uh, I think, manifests as a superpower. Um, yeah, that's, that, that, yeah. just, just as a reference, a reality check reference, there's a lot of comparisons to taking vaccine and getting autism as a result, uh, right. or cancer or any other kind of disease. Larry, what do you think about this? Well, I was going to address that. Uh, I've got it up here. I got a couple of short sentences that says that addresses that the widespread, the widespread fear that vaccines increase the risk of autism originated in a 1997 study published by Andrew Wakefield, a British surgeon. Mm. The article was published in The Lancet, a prestigious medical journal, suggesting that the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine was increasing autism in British children. The paper has since been completely discredited due to serious procedural errors, undisclosed financial conflicts of interest, and ethical violations. Andrew Wakefield lost his medical license, and the paper was retracted from the license, or the Lancet, excuse me. Wow. So it was just a, a bunk paper, and yeah. uh, so many people took off on that. But he wore a lab coat when he was <laughs> when he was doing the YouTube video of it. He was <laughs> he used very short yeah. sentences, no big words, and he looked right on the camera, best camera in the world, yeah. and, he, right. and he spoke to the world and the people. Yeah, they were good and, people. There were good people and, everywhere. And well, Kent Holbert said he was a scientist too, a teacher. Well, the fact that he was uh, that he lost his position is proof that it was true. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, because they're it's all part of it. <laughs> so basically, vaccines, autism, um, originally tied to measles vaccine, or uh, what was the other disease that you were talking about? Measles, mumps, and measles, mumps. Yeah. It was a bunk paper. It's not real. It's not true. You won't get. 
you will not get autism from taking vaccines. No. Though there are people who will say like, hey, you know, there are, you know, there are trace metals and, 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 and salts and stuff in the vaccines that might harm you, mercury, stuff like that. Um, and and it, is a, it is a bizarre thing to say. There's, there, I'm eating banana right now. <laughs> There are probably more trace metals in this banana that I'm eating than there are in the vaccines that are being inoculated into my system. And so Unless you need trace metals. <laughs> yeah. I I'm a big nerd on banana trace metal <laughs> <laughs> stuff. And I don't, we don't have time to talk about that today, but we will in the future, but man, I can tell you some cool things about bananas, but yeah, they're like radioactive. They got a lot of stuff in them and we don't, because we just eat them all the time. We just think inherently that they're safe and that's a natural thing. We don't forget about it. But then once vaccine and it has orders of magnitude less of the same things that we consume every day it's like oh no 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 they're eating their cheetos and i mean like you don't know what's yeah. in that thing i'm like oh <laughs> right. do you know why that thing's for us an orange <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway uh so here's the thing you when you guys get vaccinated that means you're immune right that means you don't have to wear a face mask anymore it means you don't have to mm -hmm. wash your hands isn't that correct What's going on? Scott, what do you mean? What, you're smiling. You're, you're looking forward to the day. You don't have to wash your hands anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Finally, I can push all these buttons and never wash my hands again. Once you get the vaccine, you won't even have to wear a mask anymore. Yeah. You know, because, uh, you know, you know how that works. But fact is, is it takes everyone time uh, who wants a COVID-19 vaccination uh, to, first of all, get one, but then... Mm -hmm while the vaccine may prevent you from getting sick, it's unknown at this time, you know, if you can still carry on and transmit the virus to others. So until right. it's understood, uh, then you can't just go and, you know, believe that kind of stuff. It's unfounded. There's no evidence. Yeah. Me not being able to get sick by something doesn't mean that I can't spread it, which is an right. interesting concept, but it's absolutely valid. And you know what? I, I've said this before. Um, the filter, like I'm a filtration scientist as well. Um, the filters that we were originally using were not very effective towards keeping droplets, you know, you know, away from people in a very non-sterile environment for extended periods of time. So eventually that little piece of material will get saturated and it'll be blowing out just as many droplets as you are, you know, um, protecting yourself from. But something I did not anticipate and so I will correct myself on this is that I did not understand the cultural impact there was in seeing people wear masks all around you and you wearing a mask. And that as a reminder that, Hey, there's a current threat going on, stay six feet away from this person. Oh, I saw some masks. I'm going to wash my hands a little bit longer today. Ah, I'm going to make sure I, if I cough, I, I either do it in a mask or, or cover my elbows. I'm going to do, I'm going to be a little bit cleaner, a little bit neater and a little bit more empathetic for the people around mindful. Me. Of, mm. of, of our situation. And I think that's the, that's the effect that these masks really have. I think that's the, the true profound effect far greater than, um, the, the filtration capacity or efficiency for the period of time that you're wearing it. Just the fact that we are a culture all on the same team trying to help ourselves get better. Like that's, that's, that's caring. You can't treat, you can't, you can't ordain that you have to, you have to have people naturally and genuinely care about each other to make that happen. Eric, no, actually, Larry, this is a good one for you. So uh, are you looking forward to the microchip that they're going to put into your bloodstream when you get vaccinated? Um, yeah, that way I'll always <laughs> No, I'll just look it up on the internet. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I will get you a tile instead. I'll make it a lot easier. I'll make it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, there is the idea of... Um, and I think this is actually a QAnon um, uh, mm -hmm. conspiracy where the vaccines are a means this is not true. And I'm going to be looking forward to the day where we never have to talk about QAnon again. But uh, the idea was they're using vaccines as a way to trace sheep, sheep being people and getting a vaccine means you're going to be put into the system. And when you're part of the system, you can't get back out again. Six, six, six. Larry, are you worried about that? No, how, not at all. How do you know it's not true? Um, well, first of all, <clears throat> have you seen the needles? <laughs> that they use? <laughs> Are you going to get a chip through that needle? <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it just it's it's 
plus the, the, you'd have to have an entire bureaucracy set up just to be able to try handle all the information that would be generated by it. Uh, it's just, it's just it's dumb, mm -hmm. but you know, it's conspiracy. People believe all kinds of dumb things uh, without good reason. Well, I mean, Boudreaux has two chips in his body. What do you think about that? Well, I've, right. got, I've got one too right here over my heart, but it was, it took surgery to implant it. Oh. Actually, I embrace our cyborg future. I just, mm -hmm. just me, but yeah. yeah. Uh, Eric, what do you uh, think about the conspiracy of microchips and vaccines? What what can be uh, said, presented without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. It's I a, love it. <laughs> in my opinion, it's like, I love yeah, it. I can make up anything uh, mm -hmm. I want. I, it, yeah, the conspiracy theory, it's so, it's such a flimsy, such a flimsy argument, but yet, People, uh, you know, it kind of comes back to religion. People, I think, want to believe this stuff mm -hmm. and for whatever reason. And maybe it's like you said. Well, well a, lot, a lot of times people think that if, if they think that something that the government says is wrong, that they're smarter than the mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a self-boistering thing. I'm so much smarter than them. I don't believe that stuff. Right. You know, it's very true. Yeah, but, you, know, you, you can ask um, someone who says that, where... where why do you believe that? Like, what is the root of that theory? Like, where did you get that from? And what they'll tell you in a lot of cases is they'll say, well, this started after the comments made by Bill Gates himself from the Gates Foundation about a digital uh, 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 chip that they're going to put in you. And he didn't say that at all. If you go back to the TED Talk and the stuff that he was talking back then, he was talking about a digital certificate of vaccine records and the technology he was referencing referencing is not a microchip so they're just wrong for that they're just they're just conflating you know eric well, sound like you want to say something yeah yeah uh, i think i lost my lost my train uh but um you know yeah i think it, i think it comes back to what you were saying wombat about trying to get people to conform, put these masks on. Mm -hmm. Now you're just, you're feeding the, the sheeple uh, narrative that these, these folks have where now you're going to tell us what to, so the masks don't really even work, but you're going to make us wear them because you think it makes us wash our hands more. Well, that's just yeah. controlling us. And then, and then you start putting something in my arm and it's just like everything about it is, and then it ties into politics because it's uh, you know it's it's big government and it's you telling thing. me what to do yeah and it's just like you know what <laughs> and that's always the unfortunate side when science becomes political because then there's always going to yep. be fifty percent of the population that regardless of how sound the science is are like nope and then there'll always be just the fraction that's just like don't tread on me don't tread on me but also the side that's like hey i believe you but you have a bad history government <laughs> i just don't like you I, you know it's just basis of it um hey i will throw out this i think this could probably be our last example oh before we go there scott you had mentioned um you asked someone where did you get that information from mm -hmm. quick se tip just for me just my two cents Whenever I ask that question, I always fall into a rabbit hole of getting into the weeds of someone's mm. holy book, and I don't want to go there. I want to get straight to their methodology. So instead, I'll ask them, if they tell me something, what does that mean to you? That way, I can at least hear them paraphrase the information that they're saying, mm -hmm. not parroting, but paraphrasing. So they're using their mind to think about what was being said. And then I immediately go from, what does that mean? Or what, do you, what does that mean to you? And then finally, how can we test that? How can we both test that together? Those tend to be much more constructive oh, yeah. conversations. How can we test that? And how reliable is that test? What do you mean by that? How can we test that? How reliable is that test? I can't wait till COVID is over, one, to swim, and then two, to hit Nashville and finally uh, <laughs> do more. But I will be still social distancing and stuff like that. But looking forward to getting my SC back on. All right. Here's the last one, guys. You know, sometimes it's just better to get coughed on. Sometimes it's just better to get actually sick than to take vaccines. That's how... Everyone should really vaccinate. So you just get coughed on instead. The disease is a much better way of building immunity than the old vaccines. mumps approach. Yeah. What do you think, Larry? <clears throat> Getting infections to help well, us build immunity better than vaccines. Well, is that true? well I, I think that it will certainly do it. Uh, the, the problem is, like I mentioned earlier, that the disease or the virus can overwhelm your system. 
Right. And, and, it, and it also can have side effects that are long lasting, can last you for the rest of your life, yeah. the full blown virus. Uh, and if you do that and you succumb to it, game over, that's it. Yeah. Or you're dealing with a situation uh, for the rest of your life. You know, it's better to build the an antibodies before you're exposed to the full disease. Correct. And uh, yeah, a, a disease might work. actually compromise your immune system long term to make right. you sick to a whole bunch of other stuff. Right. Good but point. All the vaccine is doing is bolstering your antibodies specifically for that disease, but it's not even the disease that's in you. It's just a piece of it. And it's it's such a great little system. Uh, Boudreaux, you came out with a new song. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. We're going to try to see if we can play it during the break today. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I met this guy on a Facebook group for our love of bad religion, and we did a bad religion cover, and we did a social distortion cover. Nice. And he's like, hey, I want to write this song for my wife, and uh, would you play bass on it? Uh, and then he had electronic drums on it as well. And uh, I, I convinced him, I was like, hey, man, I can do some acoustic drums. <laughs> I can do some real drums. <laughs> <laughs> and how that conversation so goes. <laughs> it, it came together really, really well, I think. And um, uh, all we have is the past. It's uh, on YouTube now and hopefully nice. it'll be shared on the show. So. Absolutely. Very cool. Scott, what's the, when are we looking forward to the next, you know, giant opus with all these oh, electrical yeah. devices you got? Oh, yeah. So I've got, there's like maybe two more pieces I'm trying to, I'm trying to wait for. So I'm thinking probably in two weeks I'll, I'll have everything completed and then I'm going to just start recording everything and releasing stuff. But this, the, the project, the, um, uh, there, there was another project I was working with the, the Grammy, um, writers. Um, well, I've already got like three or four songs in the can with them. They're just going to nice. be releasing them every so often. Like I think, three or four months spread apart. So those will keep coming out. And as soon as they get released, I'm going to keep you updated on that. Sweet. But as far as my new equipment and starting this whole new project, yeah, it's going to be about a month. I'm going to start dropping. Okay. And it's stuff out there. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And where can we find your stuff at? And you can find it at, um, uh, dubshine.bandcamp.com. That's the best way to, to just directly download it from my site and you can find my stuff let's chat here on youtube feel free to leave a comment we'll go over on next week's show larry i have a really howard problem i've been telling you about this all the time uh i have all this atheism in my in my closet back here and i don't know what any of it it's about What's do you about? have a book for that yeah i don't know it's just it's all over the place it's got threads I on do. them i don't know what this is about what is this I can tell you, uh, <laughs> hey, George is coming in. George my is? Book is, yeah. yeah. My book is called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. Hello, George. Hi. Coming in at the last minute. Yeah. My local meeting here in the middle of the state just ended. Cool. Uh, okay. Well, You say start when somebody did. Cool. Very good. Glad to hear it. I got all this atheism. What is it about, Larry? Tell me. <laughs> Okay, well, this has been the digital, digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. Sure as hell are. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. Say bye, everybody. We'll see you bye, next everybody. week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We'll see you. Bye-bye.